By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a mono colored battle for you. I've got mono green versus mono black. And these are two budget friendly decks. So if you like what you see, you can actually build a budget, ver budget version of both of these decks. I'm playing with a mono green deck only with reprints. So this deck is super affordable. And I'm playing against Yoop and he's playing with a zombie apocalypse deck. Um, it is a Swedish legal deck, but of course you can make a more affordable version with reprints. And before I'm going to go to the games, I'm briefly going to discuss the tactics of both of these decks. Now, if you want to go straight to the game itself, check the description below. There you will find a timestamp that will take you straight to game number one. As for here, we are going to continue with the deck deck. I am playing with my green Stompy deck today, so this, game, uh, this deck is very one-sided, it's very simple, play out a lot of creatures and just turn them sideways and kill your opponent ASAP. Now, um, of course, the dream is to have a turn one land or else so that you can quickly ramp into the bigger stuff like Killer Bees and Urnam Jin. Killer Bees is a new inclusion in this deck, so I'm really curious to see how it will perform. The idea behind it is that you don't need a lot of mana for this deck, so when you have a lot of green mana left, you can use them to fuel up your Killer Bees and deal a lot of damage to your opponent. And also, I think that you know, flyers, it's a very good evasion mechanic in the old school format. You know, it really counts if a creature flies or doesn't fly. It's really a, an added value. So this is it for my deck. It's pretty, uh, pretty simple, pretty AB. Uh, let's go to the deck of my opponent who is playing with a zombie deck today. My opponent is playing with a mono black deck and I've called it Zombie Apocalypse. Now basically what this deck wants to do is play out an evil presence, get the zombie masters on the board so to get all the zombie swamp walk and just, you know, walk all over me. Now obviously there will be some terrors probably in this deck and some other powerful black removal so it will be tough. Um, I just wanted to note that a lot of cards in old school magic have changed creature types. So for instance, this Cyclopean Mummy, it says a summon mummy, but according to the new Errata, it's actually a summon zombie. So that's why you will find it in this deck as well. And also the Zombie Master itself, just like uh, the Goblin King and the Lord of Atlantis, they've all been changed. Their creature type has been changed to, uh, well, in the case of Zombie Master, to summon zombie. So that means that if you have two Zombie Masters on the board, they can give each other Swamp Walk and regenerate. So, um, just like my deck basically it's pretty uh, it's a pretty simple strategy but um, it's also a very effective strategy probably and a consistent strategy because you're playing mono color so it's going to be curious uh, to see how this is going to work out you know playing against a black deck probably means i have to face a dark ritual so maybe i'm going to lose the race against this because he's faster than i am could be on the other hand you know, I have a very a deck full of smaller creatures and small casting cost creatures. Slightly, I think a slightly overall cheaper casting cost in my deck than in my opponent's deck. But it's definitely going to be a creature heavy uh, battle. So let's go to the games and, uh, and see what's going to happen. Game number one. And it looks like my opponent, Yoop, has already started there with his basic swamp. Turn two playing into a demonic tutor. Looks like I didn't have a turn one play. That is that is very interesting because my deck is full of one drops. So that's not a great start for me and my opponent having that demonic tutor passing turn and playing a forest. And there is a Sylvan Library, one of the strongest cards in my deck. And there is a Zombie Master, two three Zombie Master that gives all other zombies regeneration and swamp walk. Playing a force into two creatures here, Lanower Elves and Script Sprites. There is another swamp here, Cyclopean Mummy and a Bad Moon. Oh, this is bad news for me. That means that his creatures all get plus one, plus one, all the black creatures in play. Attacking now with his Zombie Master that has become a 3-4 zombie. Taking damage here, going to 13, also because of that extra card I took from the Sylvan earlier. But it's going to be hard to keep using my Sylvan for extra cards because of that pressure. And here is a Tome, so that means I can at least draw cards from the Tome. But what I need right now is a big beefy blocker to to handle these zombies. And there's a Hatless Horseman making matters worse. That's now a 3-3 creature because of Bad Moon. 
And there's the attack. Cyclopean Mummy being a 3-2. And of course, they have it has regeneration. And Zombie Master being a 2-3. Blocking the Zombie Master. And then playing a um, Berserk over it. And I'm going to 7. Oh, actually, I was blocking the Cyclopean Mummy, of course. And then tapping before damage is dealt to cast that Berserk. And the, what Berserk does, it gives a creature, it doubles the power of a creature and gives it Trample, but it dies at the end of turns. So that means the Zombie Master died. And in the meanwhile, I've played some more creatures. It looks like an evil presence here from Yoop, my opponent, probably on my Pendlehaven. In response, I use my Pendlehaven one last time to pump one of my creatures to 2-3. And that means that my opponent is not going to attack, so he's going to wait until next combat when I cannot use my Pendlehaven anymore. Looking at my top three cards because of the Sylvan Library, what can I come up with? Playing my other Pendlehaven, and this is an interesting situation because because of the Evil Presence, my Pendlehaven has been turned into a swamp, but it's still a legendary land. And that means when I play the second Pendlehaven, the older Pendlehaven will go out of the game. So this is kind of a nice way to get rid of that evil presence, because I'm already on 7, and if he can give his creature Swamp Walk right now in this stage of the game, that will mean uh, the end of me. So I'm actually pretty happy with this uh, situation. I'm on 7 now, I've got a new Pendlehaven, so I'm trying to stabilize here. And of course I have that book, so I'm activating that end of turn, then looking at my top 3 cards with Sylvan Library. My opponent didn't attack, so that's quite interesting. So he's giving me a window here. Let's see what I can do. Can I play something out? I just need like an Urnum, for example, a 4-5 big creature that can block. Or even an, uh, a Killer Beast would be great as well right now. So he's attacking, using my Pendlehaven, pumping my Script Sprites, double blocking here, and he's going to kill my Flyer. That makes sense. He is losing his Horseman, drawing a card again, end of turn. Looking, oh, not even looking at my top three cards. That's interesting. So probably already knew what was there and wanted to draw it. Still, it would have been better to just look at my cards. Playing a Desert Tourist here, taking care of that Bad Moon. So that means that the Cyclopean Mummy is now just a 2-1 creature. And this is interesting. Playing a Gabal Ghoul, creature from the Arabian Nights, that has this interesting uh, ability that when a creature dies, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. Playing a force, playing scavenger folk, more bodies on the ground just to protect me. I'm on seven, pretty low life total, but I have that book going for me. So at the end of every turn, I could simply draw an extra card, drawing some more fuel, and that should be a serious concern for my opponent. He needs to get rid of that tome. Playing an evil presence here, again doing the same thing. So I'm activating my Pendlehaven one last time. To pump a creature to 2-3 here. And playing another Script Sprites. Passing turn. And it looks like my brother's not doing anything at the moment. Passing turn. And it is a little bit difficult to follow because what happened is I told my brother, okay, I'm not just not going to tap every time like the, the book and, and my force to draw an extra card. So you don't always see me tap the book, but I am drawing a card. So that makes it difficult, especially since we're we're playing this game at twice the speed now. Looking at it at twice the speed, I should say. And this is an interesting card, Island of Vakwak. What Island of Vakwak does, it's a card from the Arabian Nights. You can tap it and then change the power of target uh, flying creature to zero. So that means that when I attack with my script sprites, it can simply change it to zero. Look at this, double... Earn M Jin, two, four, five powerhouses on the board. Of course, the downside is that they have to give his creatures forced walk, of course, one of his creatures during his upkeep. So that's going to be interesting. And it looks like my opponent is just passing the turn here. So I'm untapping everything, looking at my top three cards, picking one of them, attacking with both of my Urnums. Blocking one with this Gobble Ghoul, taking four damage, going to 14 now. And it looks like I'm really coming back into this game. And there's the Killer Bees. Now, Killer Bees is interesting with the Island of Aqua, because um, what my opponent can do, if I attack, he can change the power of Killer Bees to zero. And after he's done that, I can actually pump it up still. So this is really one of the worst creatures... Um, 
for my opponent to face here. Playing a Living Dead, I believe. That is a 1-1 one, one creature. It used to be a Summon Skeleton, but it's now also a Zombie. Attacking with every... Well, not everything, but with my big beefy creature. So he's, he's chump blocking one of the Urnums and blocking the other one with his Walking Dead and regenerating it. And this is an interesting moment in the game because he has to choose... Okay, okay, it looks like I'm just dealing a little bit of damage there with the Killer Beast. That was hard to follow, but he's on 11 now. I've played another Urnum, and it looks like this is my game. Yeah, yeah, this is it. This is the game. There were just, I think I won this game because of the card advantage, because it looked like my, bro my, uh, my brother here was going to win, but because of that Tome and that Sylvan, I could select the cards and I could draw extra cards, and that gave me the victory. So this was um, game number one victory for me. And uh, we are going to our sideboards and then we're going to go to game number two. Game number two and uh, one up for me. We've done some sideboarding. I'm expecting to see a death grip from my opponent. And uh, let's see. And I'm probably going to board in some uh, whirling dervishes, of course. So let's 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 see what's going to happen. I mean, green and black are not really each other's friends. They're tra traditional enemy colors in Magic: The Gathering. Uh, my opponent here starting with a basic swamp, playing Pendlehaven, turn one, a lot nowhere else. That's basically what you want to do in my green stompy deck. There is that death grip. Ay 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 ay. That is not ideal. That means he can start countering everything here. Oh, there's a Tranquility taking care of the Death Grip. That's nice. Let's hope he cannot find another one because that's really a killer. Playing a Scave Zombies here, a 2-2 Vanilla Creature turn 3. Tapping 4 here, playing my Urnam Jin. And there is the Walking Dead. And that is super annoying because it has regeneration, so it can kind of block my Urnum Jin, no problem. And I'm going to have to give Force Walk. Probably going to give it to the Walking Dead. Attacking here, and of course I have to Pendlehaven to pump my Lanawer Elves. And he's just taking the damage of the Lanawer Elves, and I'm deciding not to pump it. Interesting, does that mean that I have something? Oh, of course, I'm playing my Stormseeker. Stormseeker is a card originally from Legends, and it deals one damage for each card in your hand. So after the draw step of my opponent, I'm playing the Stormseeker, and you can see he's taking four damage from the Stormseeker. Going to 15 here, and there is another Walking Dead and a Cyclopean Mummy. So a lot of creatures now hitting the board for my opponent, and those regeneration creatures are super annoying. Playing another force, attacking with both. And... What, am I not attacking with my Lanawer Elves? Actually deciding not to attack, wanting to keep it as a blocker here. Changing my mind. I mean, I'm on 17. And okay, so that little counter indicates that it's getting force walk. Oh, more problems for me. All his creatures now have swamp walk, which is not very important at the moment, but they all have regeneration, and this is huge. Oh, this is a big problem for me. Blocking probably one of the living dead and using the Pendle Haven so that my Lanawer Elf survives, but this is a big, big problem. Playing a whirling dervish. Maybe that can save me, but it's only one creature, though. It has protection from black. That's the strength of this card. But, I mean, that army is just impressive. Tapping three here, playing the Gabal Ghoul that we saw in the first game as well. Couldn't do a lot of work then. Maybe it can work now. Attacking here with his army. And I'm able to block three... So that means he gets two damage in. Or is there more damage coming in? And I think we're, we're discussing it. Okay, maybe we're not, but I'm on 10 either way. So playing a script sprites here, attacking 
with my whirling dervish that means a counter on the whirling dervish going to two but i'm not sure if attacking was the right decision to make here playing a terror oh on my urnam oh man this is not great attacking with this full army of zombies those are five creature zombies here attacking they all have regeneration because of that uh, zombie master. So I'm able to pump my flyer to 2-3, tapping his, blocking one of his 1-1s one and regenerating. He's regenerating it, of course. And am I going to sack my Lanawar Elves here to soak up some damage? That's the big question. I'm not going to do it. That means I'm taking 5 damage here. I'm on 5 life. And you see that counter on the Gobble Ghoul because a creature died because of the terror. So that means the Gobble Ghoul is now a 2-2 creature. Playing another Lanawar else, I don't really think that I can survive this. I mean, it's great I've got that Whirling Dervish, but it's too little too late. And it can only deal with one creature. I've got four creatures actually attacking here. Interesting. That means it turns into a 3-3, but I mean... This is not really going to help me. If he draws an evil presence, I'm dead, by the way. And I've got to pump my... Uh, my sprites again. And I guess I'm just blocking whatever I can block. That means I'm still getting two damage from the two walking dead. So then I'm on three life. What can save me here? I think nothing can. This looks like my last attack, my alpha strike here. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. So I'm now dealing five, six, 11 damage. And he's stuck on one life. Oh, I almost had him. Oh, if I could have had a berserk there. Oh, man. Okay, well, that means it's 1-1. One, one, and that's actually pretty cool because that means we're going to see a third game. Wow, this was a quick game, but I, I can't believe I almost won because of that double giant growth. If it just could have done him one more point of damage. Anyway, it's 1-1 uh, it's one, one here, and we are going to game number three. Game number three is about to begin. It's 1-1. One, one. At least I get to start now, which is a, well, at least it's a huge advantage for my mono green deck. Uh, wow, but I almost had him there at the end of uh, end of that game number two. But I'm actually happy I didn't. It's nice. It's always nice when there is a third game, a decisive game. So these decks are, uh, are definitely very, um, very close in power level. Uh, playing a Lunar else turn one. Just a basic swamp for my opponent. He's passing turn now. Attacking with my Lunar. So bringing him to 19 and playing my second creature. But there's no land drop. Ooh, look at that. Again, that death grip. And finding a land here. And a killer bees. That's actually pretty good. And remember, Death Grip, he needs to keep two black mana open to counter. And that's, of course, going to be difficult for him, I guess. Oh, and there is an Evil Presence. Which is pretty relevant because of the Killer Bees. Playing another force. So it looks like I'm finding my land again. Attacking now, pumping the Killer Bees, meaning I deal four damage here. And I think my opponent has to start playing some creatures, but he's not doing it. And I'm attacking again. And that Killer Bees is doing serious damage here. He's on 9 already, playing a Gabal Ghoul. And another forest. And, and here you can see how strong Killer Beast can be. Because I'm actually using my Lanawar Elves as extra damage. He's on 3 and it looks like that's it. Is that the game? Wow, okay. Yeah, that's the game. That's that's the game. Okay. Well, sometimes this is what happens. I mean, what can I tell you? Um, I was hoping for a really exciting third game, but um, I think Killer Beast was just a, a a killer. It was a killer. It's nice to see, by the way, because like I said in the introduction, Killer Beast is a new inclusion in this deck. Tell me what you think of Killer Beast. If you're a green player, do you play with Killer Beast? What are the pros? What are the cons? Uh, in, in your experience with uh, this card, really curious 
to hear from you. Um, thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. If you want to support the channel, you probably know what to do already. You can subscribe, you can leave a comment, you can like, you can share this on your socials. That all helps. And thank you to everybody who's already doing that. If you're not using ad blocker, great. You know, that at least gives me a couple of dollars um, to invest in my channel. Talking about finances, you can also support me financially on Patreon. I have a Patreon page. There's probably a link popping up right now. You can click on the link and you can check out my page. I would really appreciate that. And I would appreciate it if you would consider becoming a patron. Talking about patrons, let's take a look at the end scroll with all the fantastic, super amazing patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het was fikker te somba kazing.